Yeah. We back again. Tron and Kimberly. Moses. Welcome to Team Moses Vlogs. Will you watch us do life? And enjoy marriage. On our journey. I love you. You love me. I love you. You love me. I got you back, baby. I got you back, baby. I love you. You love me. I love you. You love me. I got you back, baby. I got you back, baby. I love you. You love me. I love you. You love me. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I was just, as I was um, getting ready to go take a shower, I was just thinking about a few things. And so I decided to make a quick video. And I made a video on lust before, but I just wanted to go, this is kind of an update. And I am uh, might say a few of the same things I said on the other one, but it's, it's a reminder. It's a reminder. And, and the spirit of lust... I think the spirit of lust is one of the main reasons why you don't see that many men in the church. Because even when I gave my life to the Lord, honestly, the first thing I thought about is like, until my after I gave my life to the Lord, the first thing I thought about was like, wow, I can't have sex no more. You know, because I wasn't married. So the first thing I'm thinking like, well, I can't have sex no more. And the spirit of lust is one of the main reasons, I think. Now, there's plenty of reasons, riches and different stuff, money, different stuff, greed. But I think the uh, greed for other things, I think, um, but the spirit, I think the spirit of lust is like the main reason you don't see men in the ch that many men in the church. And then most of the men you do see in church are fighting with the spirit of lust. I'm going to tell you how I know that. Because, like, I follow a lot of people. I follow, not, not a lot of people. I follow people on Instagram. I follow some preachers on Instagram. And sometimes I go through, I go through who, who they're following. I go through their list to see who they're following to see if there's anybody that I want to follow. Once in a while, I do that. And what I've always noticed is a lot of these preachers are following booty models. All they do is post booty pictures. And, uh, and some of these preachers are following them. And you're like, wow. And um, I remember when I first got on. Now, I got, now, excuse me. I didn't first get on Instagram. There was this um, preacher. And he first got on Instagram. I guess he didn't know that you could see the pictures he liked. I guess he didn't know it. But everything I seen popping up was booty, 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 booty. So the spirit of lust is, is running rampant in the church. It's running rampant in the church among a lot of preachers. And I'm talking, I mentioned men, but I'm saying it's, it's with men and women, not just men, but I'm just, I don't know who the women follow on because I, I do that with men. Like, see, go see who they follow and to see if there's anybody I know that I didn't know was on Instagram or, or what have you. But let me say that the spirit of lust is um, the spirit of lust is not a fruit. It's, it's not a fruit. It, it's a seed because the spirit of lust is it produces. It produces the more you water it. In other words, feed it. It's going to produce a harvest. Seed time harvest It's going to yield fruit. And like, say, for instance, if me and my wife, we, we go to the mall and then. Lust is sneaky too. Me and my wife said we go to the mall and I keep looking and looking and looking and or oh, I'm at the mall by myself. I'm wherever looking and looking. That's feeding. You're watering the seed. It's already there. You're watering the seed. Then eventually you're going to stop doing this and you're going to indulge in it. 
You're going to go from looking and lusting to touching that thing. So it's not, it's not a seed. It's not a, excuse me. It's not a fruit. It's a seed that produces fruit because you're going to go from looking and lusting to eventually, and this is the purpose of the seed, to eventually getting you to indulge in fornication. You will. No, no, for real. You will. Keep watering that seed and you'll find out. Because at, the more you water it and the more you water it, the seed is getting stronger. It's building up muscles. It's working out every day behind the scene. Behind the scene. And then, watch this. When it's fully grown, okay, no more looking. We need something more than that. No more looking. Because lust has a appetite. Lust won't be never be satisfied with looking. That it might start that way, but lust will never be satisfied with just this. And I know we say, um, a lot of us say we'll say, "Well, look how beautiful his wife is. Why he cheating? Look how handsome and fine her husband is. Why she cheating?" That has nothing at all to do with lust. Lust has an appetite. And it don't care what's at home. Lust will never be satisfied with what's at home. What's at home will never be enough for lust because lust has to feed. That's why the other woman don't have to look as good as your wife. That's why the other man don't have to be as handsome as your husband. Lust don't care about that. Now, I know that probably sound contradictory because you got to look and lust and then it goes from there to building up to something else. But lust don't care what, what anything look like at home. I don't tell, a man could have the finest wife, the most beautifulest face on earth, the best looking body on earth if he's full of lust. He's chasing a fantasy. That's what lust is. It's chasing, it's in pursuit of a fantasy that it will never, ever fulfill. You will never fulfill. You will never fulfill the, the desires that lust give you because even though you might go have sex, say you go have sex and then you indulge in fornication, you still won't find fulfillment in that because lust can't be fulfilled. That's part of lust keeping you bound because you're going to stay in pursuit chasing what you'll never catch up to. Lust is greedy. Lust don't care what the wife look like. Lust don't care what the husband look like. If lust sees something else in the street that's willing, lust will go after it because lust got to feed. The Bible says abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Now, that don't mean that you can control lust and cut it off and stop it when you want to. You can't. It's warring against your soul. It's warring against your mind, your will, and your emotions. What that scripture is saying is never even open the door to it. Because I'm telling you, once you open the door to lust, the only way to get delivered from lust is to get delivered. The only way to get free from lust is to get delivered. You can't just stop lust. You can't stop it. Lust has to feed and it's going to make you feed him. Lust going to make you feed him. So you got to get delivered because you can't control lust. The Bible is saying don't ever open the door to it because it's going to war against your soul. It's going to war against your mind, your will, and emotions. I remember when I was full of lust. Oh man, all day. And I'm talking about after salvation. All day, sex running through my mind. I try to think about other stuff because it was warring. It was warring against my soul. And, and, and it, it was telling me it's feeding time. That's what lust was telling me. It's feeding time. You have no idea how many people in the body of Christ are uh, into pornography. How many people in the church, excuse me, how many people in the church uh, are, are wrestling with pornography and lust and different stuff? People on Facebook liking pictures and 
I seen a leader, um, I seen a leader like some picture one day with a half naked woman, her breasts out and stuff. And, and, and I seen a lot of church members do that, but I see it like this. Now with, with some people, it might even be innocent with some of the pictures they like, because they might be thinking, oh, I know this person is their birthday or whatever, but you have to take into account the pictures you like, other people are going, other people are going to see them on social media. So even if you're a woman and you think, oh, that's my homegirl. I went to school with her or whatever. You got to think about if her breasts showing and stuff, we shouldn't be liking pictures like that. Her skirt too short. We shouldn't be liking pictures like that because other people are going to see that. And I want to say this, even for men in the body of Christ, let's say men that go to church, men that confess Christ, should you shouldn't even be in pictures with your shirt off and, and showing flesh. Okay, say you built up, you stacked up and whatever. You're causing people to lust. You're causing people to lust. And that go for women too. Your dress coat, not the shirt, but your dress coat, your, your dress too short or too much cleavage showing. You're causing people to lust. And you don't want to cause people to fall. Now, I'm not condemning nobody by how they dress, but I think like if you still dressing a certain way that you dress when you was in the world is because a lot of the world is still on the inside of you. A lot of the world is still on the inside of you. And, and if you get mad, if somebody tell you now, I had this discussion with my wife before I like say, if we as pastor in a church or whatever, and a young lady come in with a, a very short skirt on a very short skirt on. Now, she not even saved yet, or maybe she just got saved. No, she not even saved yet. First of all, we don't want to run her back out of the church. That's what I told my wife. We don't want to run her back out of the church. Because first of all, if she haven't received Christ yet, she's in the right place. Now, how she dresses wrong, how she's dressing is wrong coming to church, but she's in the right place. So we don't want to push her back out the door and make her feel like a horrible person because of how she's dressed. She's in the right place, no matter how she's dressed. And what we want, we want her to keep coming. Because once she once she accepts Christ, because some sometimes people come to church for a little while. I know a lady that came to church a couple of times, then got saved. She didn't get saved the first time she came to church. And so we want her to keep coming back. I'm still talking about lust. We want her to keep coming back. We don't want to push her out the door. Come on. We looking for souls to come in the door. That's what I don't understand about church. Now I'm going off topic a little bit. That's what I understand about church. You know how many church folks I've seen on, on social media talking about sinners and they only come into church on Easter to wear their outfit and look like this and blah, blah, blah to show off their new clothes. So what if that's the reason? God, I, th I look at Easter like this. Easter is the day that God sent the harvest to the church. Well, you ain't got to go look for the harvest. Now the harvest came to you. Now what? Who cares if they came to church to show off the new dress? Who cares if they came to church to show off the new suit? They there now. Now what? <sighs> so anyway... And no, I wouldn't go throw a sheet on her either. I wouldn't go throw a sheet on her. I want her to keep coming. I want her to keep coming. And no, I don't want no the members to look at her and lust after her. But come on, we got to be stronger than that and see a soul, see a lost soul that needs Jesus. She a lost soul. Let me tell you, the, the church man I go to, I seen a woman one day. I guess this is how this conversation started because she had a very short skirt on. She had a very short skirt on. And I said to my wife, well, she in the right place. She in the right place. We want them to come to church. I mean, what, what's the whole point? People invite people to church, like come to my church, come to my church. And we see people come to church and we look at how they dress and we ready to. Yeah, I'm, I'm off topic, but so what? So what? We still on the spirit of lust. I'm off topic, but I'm on topic. So a lot of men in the church are dealing with the spirit of lust. It's a greedy spirit. It may have someone at home, but it does not care what's at home. 
It don't care. It don't lust don't care who it hurt. Lust destroys families, it destroys ministries, it destroys friendships. It destroys businesses. Lust seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. Look how many ministries went down over the spirit of lust. The Bible says, oh, how the mighty have fallen. A lot of, a lot of the preachers that you follow are following booty models. They're following booty models. And I ain't saying let's condemn them. But we need to pray for them. Women, pray for your husbands. Husbands, pray for your wives. Because once the spirit of lust creep in, lust going to say feed me. Lust going to say feed me. It's like setting a reminder. It's going to keep reminding you, I need to be fed. And you have to feed it. You have to feed it. In order for it to live, it has to be fed. Now understand this. Like I tell you, lust is sneaky. Lust will also hide. Just because you could go a week or two. Let's just say you go a week or two and wow, lust ain't popped this reared his ugly head. Don't mean it ain't still there. Lust gonna feed. It's gonna feed. Because it has an appetite. Lust is pursuing a fantasy. So if you're wondering why your husband, your husband or your boyfriend or the person you dating cheated on you. And look, and some of some of y'all are good women. And some of y'all are good men. But once lust come into play, that don't mean nothing. Now, a lot of people be looking at themselves like that. What did I do wrong? I, I tried to treat them good. I tried to, I treated her good. I did this for her. I did that. I did that for her. Yeah, you might have did all that for her. But lust don't care. Lust is chasing a fantasy that it will never catch up to. And that's why it stays in pursuit. It got it'll stand. Look, I, I watch a lot of wildlife. I watch a lot of wildlife, and I watch lions. I like watch wild dogs, um, tigers, cheetahs, different stuff like that. And when they when they get in pursuit, they might not even catch. Let's just say they're chasing a gazelle or deer, whatever you want to say. They're chasing a gazelle. They might not catch that gazelle. That don't mean they ain't going to keep chasing. They might not catch that one, but they're going to keep, ch they're going to chase another one. And then another day, they're going to chase another one. And then they, they got to eat. They got to eat or they're going to die. So they got to, they got to strengthen themselves. Now that may sound contradictory to what I said earlier that you can't control lust. You can't stop. Once lust is dead, you can't stop feeding it. Lust is going to feed. It's going to feed. It might feed when you out and about. It might feed when you surfing the internet, when you watching TV. Lust is going to feed. Because its desire is to get stronger. Its desire is to build up its muscles. So it can go from just looking and lusting to indulging it. When lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. See that three different stages, how the Bible give it three different stages. It gives the analogy of birth and three trimesters, three trimesters, just like birth. But anyway, lust, which is the seed, then it goes from looking and lusting to indulging, indulging in sin, lust, sin, death. Lust, lust, sin, indulging in it. Lust, seed, looking, looking, looking. Sin, indulging in it. Death, spiritual, then physical. A physical death where you never come in out of that hot place. But anyway, I'm about to go. 
I just want to talk about this for a little, a little bit. About talk about this for a little bit. But anyway, keep me in prayer. Keep my wife in prayer. We keeping y'all in prayer. Keep the preachers in prayer. Keep your pastor in prayer. Whether your pastor got a wife or not, keep your pastor in prayer. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. It wars against your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your will may be to not even indulge in this. No, I can't do this. I can't sin against God. But it's warring against you. It's warring. It's making war with you. Why is it making war with you? Because you originally may not want to. You may not even want to sin against God. But it's warring. It's warring. Lust is saying, no. I got to get in. And then you open the door. Bow. Once that door opens. So that's what the Bible is talking about, abstain from fleshly lust. Not that you can control lust once lust is there. It's saying, never open the door to it. Never give place to the enemy. Resist him, and he will flee from you. But anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about. I'll catch you on another day. It's Tron Moses signing off. I love you, you love me, I love you. You love me.